Hey, welcome into the Wildcat Coaches Show, our first of the 2024 season. We are down here at Ogden Ford, or I should say Young Ford, in Ogden on Wall Avenue. It's all part of the Young Automotive Group. I'm Wildcat Carl Larkey, and today I'm joined by the associate head coach for the Weber State Wildcat football team, Brent Myers, offensive line coach, and one of his top protégés, Gavin Ortega, who is our, remind me, right tackle? Left, left tackle. tackle. Left tackle. I get you guys all confused. All you know, is there a difference between right tackle and left tackle? Um... Just you have uh, your I, left I'm, foot besides the, the fact right that you line up on the right side yeah, and the other guy lines it. up on the left side. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, is the job any different, really? No, nah, it's the same. It's just the feet change a little bit here and there. That's about it. So the job is still to demolish the guy in front of you. Yep. Pretty much. Pretty much. Keep, Pretty keep much. Safe, yeah. <laughs> How's he doing, Coach? Uh, absolutely fantastic. He's had a great season. And we we grade the players in every game, and he's graded out a champion in every game. So I've been very, very happy with him. So when he grades out that well, what does that mean? What are you looking at? What are you grading Gavin on? Well, I'm grading Gavin on his footwork, his technique, and then obviously his assignment within a given play. And, uh, and then I also grade what is known as finish, which means that the defender he's responsible for doesn't cross his face to make a tackle um, whether it be in a protection or it be in a run situation, the player he's responsible does not get to the ball. And uh, we grade all of those things, what we call assignment, alignment, and technique. And uh, he's been fantastic. So I've been very happy with his play, no question. So do you know when you're having a good game or a great game or even a game where maybe you're a little bit off? Um. I'll, I'll feel it. It's it's more of a feeling that mm -hmm. I'll get. It is just uh, how fast I'm playing, how well I feel like I'm flowing with the game, and whatnot. So it'll, I'll definitely know by halftime where I'm at. But sometimes it's, I can't tell what's really going on. I just hit someone, and then the ball <laughs> goes bouncing somewhere else, and I'm just playing at that point. Simple game, right? Yeah. <laughs> just hit someone. Yeah. How how would how would you assess the performance, say against McNeese the other night? How did you how did you feel you played? Uh, personally, I I had my I don't want to say worst game, but I didn't perform as well against McNeese, or actually I performed well against McNeese and compared to like a Northwestern. Mm -hmm. So for me, I didn't think I was doing that well until about halftime when we started running the ball and I saw the cuts opening up. We would pull up the iPad and I'd see me and the tight end or me and the guard working together and we're just moving guys backwards. So. I don't really notice that stuff until I get that outside perspective mm -hmm. of what's really going on. Let's go back just a second to what you said just a moment ago. You looked at the iPad. Mm -hmm. This, you and I, I mean, we've got a few rings around the tree. Yes, uh, we Back do. in the old days, <laughs> we didn't have iPads yeah. on the no. sidelines. This is crazy. You can actually go to the sidelines and you can watch the video. Yeah, so this is, it's new this year for us. We just got it this year yeah. and we've been using it in practice. So. During fall camp, we would pull it up in practice. We'd see what we need to be working on. We would uh, talk about it, work on it, and then you can implement it in the game just right, right away. It's pretty innovative. That's wild. And, and we were happy when we had just the still photographs that we, we could look at during, you know, when the offense came off the field or the defense came off the field. Yeah, it's interesting that the NCAA has allowed it and the NFL's had it for years. And, but we have not. High schools have had it for a long time. And um, at the FCS level, our level, the, the quarterback to press box communications at, at, at our level is not yet there. Um, but in the future, the QB is going to be able to hear the coaches in his, in his microphone in his ear, which they're doing at the Division I-A level. And, uh, but it's been, it's been interesting to get the immediate feedback with the video on the sidelines. It's way different than it was all the years that I've been coaching. I would come to the sidelines and I would write down every play and every defense or blitz or whatever it, stunt that occurred. And, and then I would go over it with the players after looking at the sheet that I had written. <laughs> and, uh, and you didn't really, you, you knew, but you didn't have the concrete evidence that you do with video. And it's good for the kids because you can show them, OK, 
okay, this is the adjustment to this formation. Uh, this is what we're anticipating them doing, and we're going to make adjustments off of it. So it's been really, really, really positive. I, I'm, I'm actually, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I really enjoy it. Um, I wasn't really sure going into the season how it would work and how it would be, but it's been awesome. I really enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, as old guys, we're suspicious of the technology. Yeah. You guys, you guys <laughs> adapt it right away. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit more. Hey, by the way, we are on the Wildcat Coaches Show down here at uh, Young Ford in Ogden, Utah on Wall Avenue. This is Brent Myers, the associate head coach for the Weaver State Wildcats and the offensive line coach, uh, Gavin Ortega, who's one of his tackles. I'm Wildcat Carl Arkey. We've got Montana coming up this week. Let's look ahead a little bit right now. Does that help, Gavin, uh, the players refocus a little bit more quickly after what was obviously a disappointing game the other night? Um, are you talking in respects to how we played against McNeese and then how well the outcome of the game and okay. obviously now you've got to get refocused and ready to play another game and it's yeah. not just another game yeah this is Montana so the way that our coaches go about it is win or loss we treat it, treat it the same there's always good there's always bad one of our sayings is it's never as good it's never as bad so the way we see it is even though we might have lost, you can still grow from it. Or even if we win, we can still grow from it. So we just got to attack it the same way every single week and just prepare how we got to prepare to win. So how have the players come back, Brent? Well, you know, after watching the film and the offensive sex, it's success, and I can only really speak for the offensive line and the offense, we were very productive um, against McNeese. We ran the ball for 287 yards and – and in our job, how we run the football and how we protect the passer is our measurement in regards to how we played. And we didn't give up any sacks. We didn't – hardly any pressures. And um, I thought overall we, we really played very physical. And uh, so what I want the guys to do is to keep their confidence, even though they, you, we had a disappointing loss and go into Montana playing in, in the exact same fashion, but improve the individual technique and, and uh, continue to eliminate uh, mental mistakes that occur in, in every game. You know, I always say that football's like golf. Playing offensive line is like golf. You can never be good enough. <laughs> and in, in you, there's always work and time that you have to put in improving your craft and uh, not a lot of people think this way, but we as offensive linemen see our jobs and our uh, craft is very, very specific and very special uh, because we're the only position in athletics that can't see the ball. <laughs> and so we have a very, very difficult job. And uh, But we, and we embrace the challenge, and Montana brings some – some real challenges because we're going to play up there on the road. It's going to be loud, and, and communication is such an important part of our play. And I think that's one of the things that the kids are, are you know, like today we're going, to, we're going to have crowd noise on the field because we have to get used to it. We have to get used to communicating and, and then executing uh, in that regard. So um, Montana always brings uh, – brings out a little bit more competitive attitude in everybody, and I don't care what sport it is, uh, it personally myself. And you know this from your days at Eastern Washington, and right? And my days at Northern Arizona, where mm -hmm. Montana has always been the rival. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and I hate to say this, but it, it's, it brings out the best in people because they're good. They're a really good football program, and they've been really a good football program for a long time. And every year is a new year and a new challenge, and, and they present uh, schematically some challenges for us, which is, which is good. Um, but, uh, but that's why you practice. So. <laughs> and, yeah. and this is the first time you'll be playing in Washington Grizzly Stadium, right, Gavin? Yes. Yeah, first, what have people told you about it? Um, all I know is you're about 15 feet underneath the crowd, so the noise is on top of you, unlike a normal stadium where it's – kind of all around but it's directed into the bowl so i heard it's just deafening it sometimes i would think as a player though that's something you 
you would embrace, you would enjoy that. That That's a great atmosphere to be in. Yeah, I, I personally, I love playing away because as soon as you run out, you get all the booze, all the... <laughs> All the talk, and then it's just, it's just gets me awake. It like lets me know it's it's go time. So, so how do you anticipate handling the crowd noise and carrying out your assignment? Um, well, my assignment, I know that I have to communicate it all the way back to the right tackle. So whatever I call, I have to let the right tackle know what's going on. So for me, it's going to be an extra or over communication. So whether I got to stand up, whether I got to yell his name a couple of times, whether I got to start touching guys, say, hey, relay, relay, relay mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. whatever I got to do, I just got to do it because they need to know. They need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Is it a little bit extra special? And, and I know when, when people bring up Montana and we're three weeks out from the game, people will always say, no, nah, no, the most important game is the game this week. And it is. But there is something extra special about this, isn't there? Um, I would say, yeah, because it's, I, I don't want to say it's just the Montana thing, but with all games that are important, yes, but you just want to beat them. Mm -hmm. it, I, I think it has to do with the crowd, the atmosphere there is everybody knows, everybody knows that feeling and who's, who's watching. So you just really want to go shove it to their face and <laughs> walk out of there with a win and that's that. Well, I, I can speak from experience. The last time I was there, which was nine years ago, 2015, it was the first Weber State win in 28 years in Missoula, Montana, and it felt really good. <laughs> so I hope that you get to experience yeah. that as well. Yeah, that would, that would be sweet. That's a, a win that you would remember for sure, yeah. Now, tell me about playing at Washington earlier this year. You were a Washington kid. Yeah. To be able to go out in a Husky Stadium – that had to be just an out-of-body experience, surreal, I would imagine. It w it was pretty because I've it was I've seen it on TV all the time. I've heard people talk about it. I've heard people go to the games, make a big deal out of it. But really being down there and seeing the the double high rise, mm -hmm. the feeling the crowd, the atmosphere, it's something different, especially when you know I live two hours away from that. Right. Like I grew up watching, hearing about it all the time. So being able to play with it, it was pretty surreal it's a it's an out-of-body experience like even now I, I think like whoa I played on the Huskies Husky field I played against UW I so it's pretty pretty fun great memory yeah great it memory. is a great memory that's Gavin Ortega offensive tackle for the Weber State Wildcats his offensive line coach Brent Myers also the associate head coach for the Weber State Wildcats who've got Montana coming up this week by the way if you have a chance come on down to uh, Young Ford in Ogden. Check out all the great cars down here. We did when we walked in, part of the uh, Young Automotive Group. We've got the Black Widow behind us. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I'm scared to touch it. <laughs> that's how pretty it looks. Like I Don't even breathe on it. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling about no, it. No, it can so. take it. It can take it. I believe it. The thing looks, looks meaty. It's got some kick to it, I think. You know what? If you and I were driving something like that, We'd feel 20 years younger, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be pretty fortunate if we had that chance. I'm just, I'm just hoping I can get up into the car <laughs> at this stage of the game in right. my life. Right. <laughs> now, let me ask you, let me get, get back to football for a second. What makes a good offensive lineman, what, Brent? What are you looking for? What, and, and ultimately, what makes a guy really stand out from everybody else? Well, the position requires – you know, the physical attributes of a uh, of an offensive lineman are guys that are big. Um, and we have certain standards height-wise, and we have certain standards for the positions. Like, Gavin, you're, you're what, 6'5", yeah. 300? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And we have certain athletic things that we look for when we recruit and and size potential, and and so they can fit the the requirements of the job first and foremost and then the the competitive nature and the the desire to be really good at the craft because it is different um, and most of the time we're going to recruit kids who are really athletic and can run uh, for big kids and obviously they don't run as fast as dbs and wide receivers but their athletic ability and their um, just their ability to move their feet and have enough power and strength that gets developed over a you know a, a career and and um, and they can we kind of have to predict 
where they're going to be mm-hmm. in two years from now. Right. Like when Gavin was coming out of high school, he was 270 pounds. But he has the frame, the shoulder width, hip width that he can put on that kind of weight. And then he had the personal strength levels and athletic ability that we felt like could really end up being a really, really good player for us. And we kind of predicted it coming in. And uh, and then when he was a freshman, he actually played as a freshman. Now, that didn't happen to every kid, but um, there's decisions you have to make when you recruit a kid. Where where can he be in two years from now? Mm-hmm. Where can he be in a year from now? So you can kind of gauge your your depth. Now, as an example, we have 17 old linemen, and we have young guys, and we have older guys, and and uh, their level of difference between their development is very individual, and and uh, each kid uh, improves strength-wise, power-wise, athletically through the training that we do with them in the off season and during the season. And I think that's part of part of it. But we're we're looking for really athletic guys because what they're asked to do is different. Right, and um, they have to be a little bit more cerebral, yes. and, and, don't they? I mean, yes. football is such a physical sport, and you know you can put a defensive end out there and just say, "Go get them." Yeah. With you've got blocking assignments, you've yeah. got all kinds of things that that are going through your your mind uh, on any given play, right, Kevin? Yeah. Well, that's the thing I I've been telling some of the younger guys about is not only do you look at who you're blocking, I look at people's feet. Like I'm looking at the way their toes are pointed, the way they have weight on their foot, the way they're leaning, the way their eyes are looking. There's Those are giveaways? Mm-hmm. Those are things that people don't think about when they're watching football because all they see is two big guys just boom. <laughs> and the thing is there's so much like, oh, I'm going to step this way because he's leaning that way. I'm going to use my left hand here because he's going to probably spike across my face or he's going to s- film report show that he likes to shoot with his left and then swipe with his right. It's just there's a lot of things that – People don't notice on the day-to-day, oh, I'm watching football. So to do all that, does it help to also be a good student? I know you're you're in, uh, what is the exact major? You're, you're studying to go into nursing, right? Yeah, so yes. I just got accepted into the nursing program, actually, two days ago. Congratulations. So, Congratulations. Yeah. That's Thank great. You. So I'll be doing that in the spring, and then from there on, I'll be graduated next year, next spring in that. So I'll be a registered nurse. But, yeah, it's I would say a lot of the O-line, the best O-line guys are smart guys. Mm-hmm. So it's people like to say we're the big guys, we're the stupid guys, but really. <laughs> not at all. Not, I don't think so. All. I don't think so at all. And by the way, before we wrap it up, your interest in nursing comes from your own uh, dealing with your own diabetes, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So my, uh, my mom's one of her good friends. She was a nurse. And when I was super sick, I, w- I lost 40 pounds in a month. Super skinny. The first time I've ever saw my ribs before. And I was, I was, uh, she called us in and said, hey, I'll take Gavin in, let me get some blood work done. And that's, that's how I got diagnosed, got shipped down to Children's Hospital in Seattle. And ever since then, I was like, dang, what if, what if my family was, had a member that was a nurse? So I just want to be the nurse so I can help people out. It's just, it's something that happened to me and I want to be able to share and give help to other people. Well, we need that. We need more people to do that. And I, I'm glad that you're, you're accepted into the program and I'm glad that you're going to be doing that. Uh, down the road yep. but a lot of football so still to be played before that all yes. happens yes there is hey listen have a great week up in montana play well up there enjoy the experience and uh, hopefully we can do this again all right thank and you. when when you get that pro contract and you come back and buy the black <laughs> widow we get the all first right. ride okay? all right we'll do we'll all right good. we get the first ride hey our thanks to brent myers gavin ortega for joining us down here at young ford in ogden on wall avenue we'll take a time out we'll come back we'll be talking soccer coming up on the wildcat coaches show 30 years at the young automotive group has taught me that a job can be more than just a paycheck As I've witnessed the expansion of the Young Automotive Group, I've also seen my children grow, and there's a sense of symbiotic pride in that growth. Working for a company that invests in my career and me as a father is everything I could ask for. I don't just work here, I belong here. And for that, I am endlessly grateful to be a lifelong member of the Young Automotive Group family. And welcome back to Young Ford in Ogden, Utah, part of the 
Young Automotive Group. We're down here on Wall Avenue. We've got all the great cars down here, the great trucks down here, the great deals, and the great people down here. So come on down and check them out and get yourself one of the new models that are coming off the line here in the fall of 2024. Hey, we're talking soccer right now. We've got Craig Sanders, the coach of the Weber State Wildcats soccer team, and Ali Swenson, his leading scorer so far on the season. Uh, by the way, congratulations. You're off to a great start. Thank you. Thank you. Do, you. you I, I checked the stats, and correct me if I'm wrong, you had one goal your first year. You had one goal your second year. Yes. Now five goals? Yes. Five goals? Five goals. So what are you doing? I, you know, I'm eating better breakfast. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> are you eating Wheaties? Uh, that doesn't, yeah, your generation wouldn't get that. Do you know what that means, the eating Wheaties? your Wheaties? No. What oh, yeah. It used to be, Coach and I are old enough, we remember, there used to be a commercial campaign for the breakfast cereal. You got to eat your Wheaties, oh. and all the great athletes were eating their Wheaties. So obviously, you are, <laughs> even though Wheaties. you don't know it, yes, you are eating your Wheaties. Seriously, though, what's happening? No, I don't know. It's just I wonder if it's just my confidence as like a junior now. I feel like I'm a more of an upperclassman, so I have more of a role on the team. So just confidence on the field. It's just when I'm in front of the goal, I've been able to have some composure. So. Coach, she's getting a lot more shots, isn't she? Yeah, she's she's leading uh, for our team all the offensive categories, shots, uh, assists, um, goals. So she's doing everything right. Uh, she's she's modest, but she works very hard. She's at practice early, late, working on her finishing, and it's paid dividends. She's uh, she's explosive. She's dangerous. Uh, we, we have so many of the opposing coaches reference her, you know, uh, before game and you know that they're wary they've been watching a lot of film on her and sh despite that attention she's getting she's been absolutely fantastic and uh, it's it's hard work and every year uh, she's had incredible progress you see from spring to fall the big jump she makes um, and this year she's combined the speed the the touch the talent and added some composure she scored some great goals and uh, long range short range so um, yeah, she's she's uh, set for a really good season. I think. I think what we've seen is just the start. I was, uh, was going to ask. Well, yeah. In fact, I wanted to ask Ali. What do, What do you see as your, as your biggest strengths, and in, in what you bring to the pitch? Um, I would say probably my speed is probably my biggest strength so far. And going into conference, we're playing different style of teams. So I hope that honestly, my movement and my runs that I make, I'm being dynamic can help me in conference and I'd say that's probably one of my strengths. Do you have to be selective on the runs that you do make and you can't obviously go every single time right? Right yeah it, you have to switch up the runs because they if you do it too much they know exactly what you're going to do and I have to play a little bit differently just because of how small I am too as well so just depends on who I'm going up against. Yeah because it is a, it is a physical sport is it not coach? Yeah. Very, very physical yeah very physical. I, I, I recall um, the game against Bakersfield. There was a, a corner f against us, and there was a first-time clearance. And you collected the ball deep in our half, and she ran with the ball at her feet with someone chasing her. And they must have run 60, 70 yards, and they couldn't catch her. And she ended up taking a shot, just missed the post. But she ran seven yards with the ball at the feet. Uh, the, the player marking her couldn't even catch her. Uh, which is a great indication of her uh, control and speed, and, uh, and that's why she's been so effective. You're able to dribble faster yeah, they could run. than the defender who's trying to run up and catch <laughs> catch you? Yeah. I was able to that day, yes. That day. <laughs> most days. Most Mo days. Most days. And, and I, you know, it's like anything else where people do something so well and they're so good at it. You know, somebody like me who doesn't really know the intricacies of the sport, we don't appreciate what a, a, a skill that is and how difficult that is to run that fast, control a ball, dribble it, and also be have your head on a swivel looking all over the place, right? Right, yeah, yeah. It can be very difficult. No, a lot of people don't understand. There's so many things to think about. Just It's not just kick a ball and run. But Does it come naturally, though, now? It does. It, as I've gotten, as this is my third year here, it's definitely – mindless like I try and just play free because I remember as a freshman it you're so caught up in okay what should I do next and so it kind of just comes naturally now and where you fit in yeah whether you should pass whether yes. you should take a shot whether you defer to a senior or a junior isn't yes. that part of it totally yeah 
So was it part of your game plan this year to really put the emphasis on Allie and some of her teammates and make them the focal point? Yeah, a Allie's been a key part of our team uh, for all three years. She's dangerous. She, she brings something to the table that, that we've not had. Players who can, who can make those runs, get in behind, um, and, and cause havoc for, for any defense. And uh, we played a lot of tough teams this year, top 10 teams in the country. And, uh, and the one thing that they struggle with is, is her speed and her dynamic movement. So it's, it's always been a feature. And as I said, over the three years, every year she's made major strides. She's got better every year. And what you're seeing now is, is, is kind of a complete player, can do everything. And, uh, and that's why she's so good. She's also uh, our best assist, uh, you know, making those passes to right people. She can go wide, she can go down the middle, she can find players in the middle. So, um, you know, she's a handful to deal with. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic that she's a wildcat. Is it difficult to balance uh, being unselfish and, and passing, uh, being willing to pass, but still having to be as aggressive as coach wants you to be uh, because somebody's got to be taking shots. Somebody's got to be forcing the issue. Right, yeah, it's, it all comes down to a lot of different decisions. Like, it's choices very last minute, so it's sometimes hard to make the right decision because you take a selfish shot, and then it's like, oh, I could have passed. And so it's hard to make sure who has the better shot. So. But you're willing to pass. Willing to pass, definitely willing to pass. And a lot of people aren't. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen it, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Not, not necessarily not on your team, no, but here. in the sport. Totally, yeah. 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 Talking with the speedy Allie Swenson. And her coach, Craig Sanders, we're down here at Young Automotive in Ogden on Wall Avenue. Speaking of speed, there's a beautiful, beautiful, maybe we'll get a shot of it later, this beautiful Mustang RTR. I can only imagine how fast that thing goes. If I could just fit into that car, <laughs> I, I would yeah. get that car. You look good in it. I would look good in that, wouldn't I? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You would, too. Yeah. We'd all look good <laughs> in that car. So come down and check out uh, Young Ford in uh, Ogden on Wall Avenue. Um, let's talk a little bit about coming up through the ranks. I, I looked and I saw, I thought that you had played against your teammate, Lily Blum. Is it Blum? Yes. 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 You play, You were at Olympus, right? I was at Skyline. You were at Skyline. Was she was at Olympus. Yes. Tell me how that, uh, did you, you played against each other in high school? Yeah. So actually, she was on my club team. And so we played up with each other, but then it, in high school season, she we were rivalries because Skyline Olympus always mm. that rivalry sort of. Oh, I know. But um, yeah, I played against her in high school. She's a great player, phenomenal player, all around. She can play any position. She's she's good. Now, when you played against each other, though, friendship goes out the window, friendship right? Goes out the window. Yeah, it was funny because she'd score, and then I'd see her at the half line, and it would be like, yeah, good goal, but. You Hopefully didn't really mean didn't it, mean no. It. <laughs> you didn't mean it. You really didn't want no, her to I score. Didn't. No, but she's a great player. So now playing together. How's that? Yes. Together again. Together again, yeah. Well, she committed here. She's a year older, and so it kind of swayed my decision also coming here to Weber because I loved her as a teammate, and she's just a phenomenal player. I looked up to her so much, so it's fun playing with her now. Craig, I think it's great because you've got so many kids who are from this area yeah. on your squad. Yeah, predominantly uh, Utah-based uh, kids, uh, but we have got uh, a number from out of states. We've got as far as Texas uh, and uh, Illinois. Uh, we've got to California and Oregon, uh, but mostly out of Utah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, one of the things for us, we have the uh, we have a fantastic uh, youth development program here in Utah with the young players. Soccer is such a popular sport here, and uh, what we like to do is get to watch the kids you know multiple times we you know we watch them for years and years we get to understand them their highs their lows and it's always hard two years out when you you're looking at players to project what they're going to be but uh, we think the more time we spend watching them play and just getting to understand them from a distance um, it helps us and you know she had a fantastic club coach as well uh, who who we we know and respect and so you know, it, it's, it, it minimizes the risk a little bit recruiting some of these great kids out of Utah. And I think we've, we've got some fantastic uh, uh, soccer players out of Utah, and uh, it, it really bodes well, not just for the ones we have now, but uh, our 25 class, which is a big class, is really, really, really exciting. I mean, we've got some absolutely exceptional players coming. The overall skill level of players nowadays, not just in Utah, but in other parts of the country, it's got to be so much higher than it was 10, 20, yeah. 
30, in my case, 40, 50 years ago. We didn't have these kind of programs that you had back when I was, I was, we played soccer, but there really wasn't that much of an opportunity. Yeah. Well, the playing is one thing, um, and, and the coaching is, is significantly better, but the, um, the availability to watch high-level games, I mean, there's two pro teams in, the con in, the, in, in Utah, uh, men's and women's, which is great, and you know it's on television. You can watch any any team around, you know, elite teams around the world play any you know any weekend. So uh, it it certainly helped the development of the game, um, and uh, I think we're the beneficiary of that. You know, just the the quality of the players. It it is difficult. Um, there's Utah has um, a lot of very good programs. I think there's seven Division One schools uh, in women's soccer, so it is competitive. Um, and I think there's um, enough talent to, to really go around. And uh, we're excited to be a part of it. You have a very young squad. Yeah. Very young squad. I, I did my homework, and I checked this. Um, 27, 28 players, mm -hmm. only four seniors, seven juniors, nine sophomores, and seven mm -hmm. freshmen. When you have that many youngsters, it's going to take a little while to get everything to gel, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, we have to be patient. And uh, one of the things we've done, un unfortunately, we had some, uh, we ended the spring very well. We had a, we had a good spring, finished well. And, uh, but bringing the young players in, we like to, to get them on the field to see how far they've progressed. And also, we, we play a really tough schedule, maybe the toughest in the conference, uh, non-conference schedule. And uh, you will play top 10, top 20 teams. We'll travel, I think, I don't know how many games we traveled on the road this year, but it was You played Colorado over in yeah. Colorado. Yeah. They're in the top 20. Yeah, top 20. We played, uh, you know, uh, Texas Tech on the road. Um, and we've played a number of teams that are significantly higher ranked than us. But that's a good experience for the players. It brings them on a lot quicker. You know, we can talk about the pace of the game, the tempo we need to have. But unless you've experienced it, it's, it's a little difficult to explain that. So we put them in, know there's going to be some mistakes, um, and a lot of it's preparation. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, uh, three of our four, our four key defenders, uh, we've had injuries, so we've had to blood some of the younger players in earlier. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's cost us a few goals, but I think the long term um, will, will be good, particularly in conference play, uh, because they've had moments, they've had experience. But it is a young team, to answer your question. Um, and uh, we think it's a really talented group, uh, but there is a little bit of patience required and a price to pay mm -hmm. as they uh, as they figure it out. They all do, but uh, you know it's just not going to be automatic. Well, I, s I could see looking at your schedule, things started to turn um, before you got that first win. Yeah. I mean, the performance in Colorado kind of was a sign of things to come. Then you get that win, and then you play well against mm -hmm. Wyoming at Wyoming, and so. Are the spirits still up, Ali? Are, are, you know, I, I know it's a long season, and there's ups and there's downs. What's morale like? I think um, at the end of, like, preseason, we played Utah State, and we played really well against Utah State, and so I think it kind of all boosted us up. Um, the score didn't really show how we really played, but that game, I think, was the turning point of, okay, wait, we can do this. And then we started our season last week, and it's nice. It's like a new season. It's we start – we have two games this week, and I think it's going to be it's going to be good. Everyone's excited to play for our new season. So. It's a little bit like with a uh, Brent Myers, who was on with us just a little while ago, said it's never as good, it's never as bad, and we just have to look forward. We don't look back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, th the way I tend to look at games is uh, there are some key things that you have to have in place to win. Uh, it's how we play. You've got to possess the ball. Your, your passing has got to be good. You've got to create chances. And that's, that's the fundamentals. And we've been very good. You mentioned Colorado. We went to Colorado. They were a, you know, an elite team, played all their fifth years and their seniors. And uh, you know, for the first 45 minutes, we were head-to-head, -head, even game. Anyone could have won it. And then as time you know, went a little later in the game, we ended up giving up a goal. Uh, and that's just what you expect. Putting the 90 minutes together is, is a little more difficult. But what's important is how we've played we've we've lost some games we've tied some games we should have won uh, but we played right you know so i think most of those are down to an odd error here and there which i think is to be expected with playing younger players uh, but they're learning really quick so i think those will dis disappear and we'll be where we want to be a very good 
you know, a soccer team knocks the ball around, creates chances. We've we've outpassed these top ten teams. We've had more territorial advantage. So it's almost like getting to the end zone and just dropping the ball. You know, mm -hmm. we, we we had more passing yardage. We dropped the ball, and uh, those things. It's we can work on catching, or you know, I'm using an analogy here, but we we're doing a lot of the right things. Uh, we've we just haven't got the results that we would have wanted and expected, but. We understand the reason, and uh, we're still very, very optimistic for the season. Well, uh, that'll happen, and, yeah. and things will start to finish, and the players will start to finish for the Wildcats. Uh, before we let you go, we've got uh, the next home match is on uh, October 13th, yeah, is it, yeah, Sunday? Yeah, yeah, we've got, uh, yeah, we have uh, Idaho State, eh? Um, let's see, it is Idaho State. Yeah, yeah, yes, Idaho. on Sunday, October the 13th, yeah. and so uh, we invite everybody to come out and watch that. I think it's great playing these matches on Sunday. I'm yeah. always looking for yeah. something to do. Well, we'd love to have you in the stands and, and cheering us on. Well, and it's a great, isn't it a great field? It is. It's one of the best. I think it's amazing. I say it is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I, I remember what it was like 25, 26 years ago when I first came up to mm -hmm. Weber State. And, yeah, it's come a long way. And so I know you guys appreciate that. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, it is. It's fantastic. And in the fall, there's nothing better, you know, with the lights on or, you know, a Sunday afternoon. It's really good. Well, we'll be out. And we invite everybody else to come out. Allie? Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate that. Of Continued success. Play well. Stay healthy. Coach, Thank continued you. success. And uh, we'll, we'll do this again. All right, Cole. Thank somewhere you. down the road. Right. Sounds good. Speaking of the road, come on down Wall Avenue and check out Ogden Ford here in Ogden, or Young Ford, I should say, in Ogden, uh, part of the Young Automotive Group. We'll take a time out, and we'll come back, and we'll, we'll talk about the Fords and all the cars down here at uh, Young Ford in Ogden, Utah. It's all coming up on the Wildcat Coaches Show. Come right back. When I was 14, my dad worked for the Young Automotive Group, and on Saturdays, I started washing cars. And even at a young age, I knew that I had a potential career. I love the environment, I love the people, the relationships, they go beyond just work hours. The people I work with, have become, they've become family. As my children have started to work for the company, it's fun to watch these relationships that have been forged over years, how it helps catapult them as well. Here we're back to wrap things up on the Wildcat Coaches Show, which has been hosted, and we uh, generously hosted by uh, Young Ford in Ogden, Utah, part of the Young Automotive Group. Oliver is with the Young Automotive Group, and he joins us right now. And, and just informed me, I did not know this. Of course, there's a lot of things I do not know, <laughs> but uh, I did not know that it's 100 years now for Young Automotive. You go back to, what, 1924? Yep, so our family business... Uh, we actually started in uh, in uh, Morgan, Utah, okay. and just my great grandfather he opened up a little service shop and was servicing uh, Model Ts and anything to ke keep the railroad open. And then he eventually <laughs> got the Oldsmobile franchi mm -hmm. franchise, and then from there we grew to what we are today. Um, you know, a hundred years later, now we have thirty stores. Wow. Uh, it primarily from Centerville up into Missoula, Montana, mm -hmm. throughout Idaho. Um, in northern Utah. So, yeah, our, our family company has finally reached 100 years. And there's no way the forefathers could ever have envisioned anything like this. I mean, a store like this, let alone 30 stores. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild what, what we've grown into, and, and it really comes down to the amazing employees that we have. You know, we couldn't do it without them, and we have 1,800 employees that really keep things moving and keep selling awesome products like this black widow you have behind us mm -hmm. and, you know the ford products that we we primarily are in automotive but we also have eight power sports stores and then uh truck and trailer like medium duty trucks and then uh, uh trailer stores yep and the nice thing about it is when you've been around in business that long there's credibility and, and people can come in and have a feeling of trust and knowing, you know, you're not some fly-by-night organization. You could, you've been here 100 years. I think you're going to be around. Yep, and that's what we want to be is, is, you know, it's a family legacy that we want to make sure that we not only take care of our employees but the community. 
Um, and so that's why we're great partners with Weber State. We love Weber State. And, yeah, you know, anything that we can do to help the program or help the community is important to us. And I know Weber State appreciates the support and uh, and, and the cross-promotion there. I mean, it's, it's two very successful programs is the way I see it, working together to make yep. each other better. Yep, and I, I hope, you know, uh, people have seen the gladiators that we've, all the coaches are driving right now mm -hmm. um, because we I've did that. seen them. <laughs> we did that from pro that fun program just to, to cross promote, you know, and and uh, really make a statement in, in that Wildcats, they're the school to root for, for sure. Cars just keep getting better and better and better. Is there anything they haven't thought of? You know, what's really amazing is the, all the new technologies that are coming out for the vehicles. Most people don't know this. The average age of a car on the streets today is 12 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and so most people don't know the new technologies that are coming out to keep people safe, to keep um, uh, to keep you on the road. And it, re it really is incredible. And so, you know, coming out and seeing all the new technologies is, is awesome. It is awesome. And, and they can come out to not just – Young Ford and Ogden, yep. you got 29 other stores yep. too as well. Yep. Something for everybody, right? Yep. And, yeah, and that's what we wanted to make sure we do is we offer a full lineup of different vehicles. You know, so whether you're looking at a Ford here or Chevrolet down at our Layton store or Subaru, Mazda, Toyota, Honda, VW, Audi, Genesis, anything that you're looking for, we really we, we, we want to make sure we carry it so that we can take care of our customers. And if you're watching in Missoula, we will we will sell you a car in Missoula, <laughs> Montana, won't we? I mean, we love the Wildcats, but we'll still work with them, right? Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll we still like the Grizz. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of competition there yeah, with the Grizz. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we, yep, we got Missoula, Montana. We got a, Ma a Mazda store up there. All right. Well, we'll take care of them after we take care of the Grizzlies. How's that? <laughs> that sounds great. All right, Oliver, <laughs> thanks so much. Hey, thank you. Appreciate the support and having us into this beautiful store down here on Wall Avenue. And uh, we really do invite you to come down here, check out. This is an amazing vehicle. And it's just one of thousands mm -hmm. of vehicles. Thousands. And, if, and if, if you don't see the car you're looking for, I suspect... I'm just guessing, but I suspect you will find it for oh, me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> just ask for Oliver. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm Wildcat Carl Arkey. Our thanks to Oliver. Our thanks to uh, Craig Sanders, Ali Swenson, Brent Myers, and Gavin Ortega uh, for joining us here on the Wildcat Coaches Show. We thank you for joining us as well. Uh, keep your eye on this channel. We'll be back with more during the course of this season. So long, everybody.